There's an old tale that I can remember, yeah, from many, many moons ago. And I can't remember it in its full details, but I still remember the gist of the story. And it's of a Native American woman, I think, if I can remember correctly. And basically what it is, is that one day she was in a field and she came across a sickly snake. And out of the goodness of her heart, she decided to take the snake home and nurse it back to health. So after a couple of weeks of her feeding it and looking after it, yeah, they're outside in the garden one day and the snake ends up biting her and poisoning her, right? And as she's lying there dying, she looks at the snake and asks the, st and asks the snake, why? And the snake turns around and says, because I'm a snake. You're crazy. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Once again, another black man has been killed by a police officer in America, in the city of uh, Wolf or a town of Wolf or something like that. Yeah. Emory police have released very limited details at this point. What we know for sure is 31 year old Jonathan Price was shot and killed in this gas station parking lot in Wolf City late Saturday night. And now a memorial has started following his sudden death. He was a trainer, a city employee, a beloved family man. He had a good heart. Jonathan Price was Marcella Lewis's only son. Two girls and one boy. <laughs> and they took my son from me, oh Lord. Wolf City Police have only said that the officer involved is on paid administrative leave. And the Texas Rangers only say they are investigating. He was defused in the situation. That's it. But his cousins say Jonathan did nothing wrong. And now my cousin, I won't get to see my cousin tomorrow. Family and witnesses tell us he was trying to defuse a domestic violence incident when he was shot. He was breaking up an altercation between a lady and another young man. Now, for all those people who want to argue that there's no such thing as um, racial profiling. Yeah. This, in my opinion, is a perfect example of that. Because... In the story, what happened, as you can see, or as you've heard, is that an altercation has broken out, a police, officer, a police officer has been called, and when the police officer arrived on the scene, he made a beeline for the black person. Out of all the people at the, at the uh, petrol station, yeah, he singled out the black person and made a beeline for him. Now... If he'd have gone up to the black person and asked him, you know, what's going on, then I don't think there'd have been an altercation. And even if he'd have maybe got into some kind of back and forth with the black guy, with all the other people around at that time, yeah, it would have soon been established that he was not the perpetrator. But the simple fact of the matter is, the cop made a beeline for the black guy as a perpetrator and tased him and then ended up shooting him now to me that's a clear-cut case of racial profiling yeah and even though what we face here in England is nowhere going to be extreme as what happened to, that, um, to uh, what happened to Jonathan Price nowhere near extreme because obviously police don't carry guns here right but for those who want to deny that racial profiling is not a thing or want to who, to, who want to argue that racial profiling is not a thing. Yeah. This to me is a prime example of it. And it happens everywhere. It's not just in America. It happens everywhere. China, China Australia, anywhere where you have a, let's say a number of people who have certain unconscious biases or certain hard prejudices against black people. Right now, I'm going to go into that into a different video, yeah, because this incident or this this this, this um, shooting has a bit of a twist to it, right? And the twist is this: Jonathan Price, yeah, was beloved in the community, right? I would say he was probably, and I would say him and his family, uh, or his immediate family that he lived with, should I say? I would say are. Uh, what I would class as maybe the one or two few black people who live in that whole area. So they've become, they fit in, should I say, they've become like the furniture in that little society there. You know what I mean? And the twist in this story is, for me, is that 
Jonathan himself had put up a message on Instagram or Twitter or one of them social media formats, right? And I'm going to put the message here somewhere. I'm going to put it on the screen so you can read it because I'm not going to read it out, right? <laughs> I'm just not going to, right? But I'll give you a, I'll paraphrase it for you. And basically in the first, he, he opens up with a, a picture of a gorilla and a, a head that's shouting. Now I don't, no, I'm not up to speed with my, um, uh, let's say, Twitter and texting emoji language, right? But I can only assume that's not a good start, <laughs> right? And then in his opening paragraph, he's basically, you know, he said, oh, you know, I'm with little Wayne when it talks about interaction with the police and they've never done me nothing wrong. So therefore, I'm not going to subject them to um, discrimination or accuse them of anything. Then in the second paragraph, he goes on to literally praise white people whilst putting down his own black family. Now, I don't know if he's talking about his black, his own family specifically, right? But the way it comes across, people have interpreted it as he's just putting down and slagging off black people whilst putting white people on a pedestal, right? And then in the last um, two sections, he talks about how he's got, he's got into trouble with police before and they've not done him nothing. And, you know, he's been drunk and he's been, or, or sorry, I wouldn't say drunk, but he's come from a bar and been stopped or, or he's had, um, he's broken small infractions, you know what I mean? Going through red lights and stuff like that. And he's been stopped by the police and they let him go and this, that and other. And so, and in a way he's kind of like, um, he's trying to incite or um, propose that, you know, all this talk about police brutality is nonsense because he's never faced it, right? Now, at this point, I want to just interject this little notion here, right? Coming from a small town where everybody knows you, even the local police, right? You are going to get away with infractions like that, yeah? They're going to... Oh, go, go on, don't do it again, John. Oh, don't go on. John, go on, just get off. You're going to get that, right? So... To me, what's happened here is that the officer who came to the scene, he either knew or transferred in from another town or he just didn't know who Jonathan was or didn't even know that Jonathan was um, known throughout the community like that, yeah? Because what I'm saying is, because, or should I say, not what I'm saying, but how I see it is that had Jonathan not have been uh, local in the community or had he have not been known throughout the white community where he lived, yeah, this story wouldn't have con the, the the this story wouldn't or let's say the aftermath of this story wouldn't have gone the way it's going now, in which the police officer is going to be charged, or it's being put out there that the police officer is being charged, and literally two days after the um after the news broke out, not like um the guys that killed Brianna Taylor where they're all trying to oh well, we don't know what happened or not we're trying to justify it all it's a clear cut case, right, and for me. The fact that you've got so many white people from the neighbourhood who are backing him up, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So this police officer is obviously going to get thrown to the wall. Yeah. But again, where, where the twist comes in is because now black people, having posted up that message on his Facebook or his social media, black people in America have shown very little sympathy for him. Yeah. And that's why I started off with the story, right? Because he's gone out there trashing black people, saying this, that, and other, and then the very same people that um, the very same people that he's been putting on a pedestal and praising him, one of them end up shooting you, just like all those other black people that he's seen being shot on the news before. He ended up in the same boat as they did. Yeah. What does that tell you? Black people are looking at him just like, well, someone asked this black man is going to come out and write and protest. I doubt it. You know what I mean? Is what it is. All right. There's something I was going to say there. I forgot what it was. Wake up. I go wake up calls a bitch. But anyway, um, I'm going to wrap the story up today. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you a simple question. This, this, would you, in that situation, would you have sympathy for someone like a Jonathan Sp uh, Price? Yeah, let me know in the comments below. 
And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. Peace. Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes.